Hello folks, it's early in the morning, that's why I got the sweater on, it hasn't quite warmed up yet. I received some records um, unexpectedly yesterday uh, from someone I have no idea who it is, and I want to thank them, but I also want to go ahead and start reviewing the public eyesore stuff. I thought I would try to do it all in one video, but I'm not going to, because the music and the discs are really intense, and I... Um, just um, need to take my time with them. I'll start with this this one. Public Eyesore. Once again, I'm sorry that I can't annotate anymore. It's because of my teeth, I know that it's hard for some people to understand me. But but I'm I'm <laughs> I'm speaking best I can. Public Eyesore is a label that was started in the late '90s by Brian Day, who is an instrument creator and uh, avant garde thinker, musician, artist. The label was based out of Omaha for a short time and Brian and I are friends and I have a release on the label among others. But he's still going and I love his dedication because his the focus of the label is not what you it's some people call it outsider art. What I call it is real real art. People who are making music and doing stuff true to their ideas regardless of whether or not it could sell whether or not it's pleasing to others they do it because they're compelled as humans to do make this make this make this work and Brian is one of those people who puts his money where his mouth is and uses his own money to release these records I know he's not making much money if any at all we didn't make any money on my release but the first one that I will review is by Many Arms and Toshimaro Nakamura. Underneath the video, in the comment above comments, is a box for for descriptions. I'll leave the title of this there, so if you can't understand what I said, you can read it. Okay. Many Arms with Toshimaro Nakamura. This is a, a very very interesting recording. What we have is three people playing guitar, bass, and drums, and Nakamura is credited at the top of the list as playing the no input mixing board. So apparently what's going on here is live mani mani manipulation of the performance um, by Nakamura. This is very intense, n noisy, not very melodic um, interplay between the instruments, the instrumentalists, but it's very intense and um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, very determined. Um, it's not just scraping and banging. Um, Randomly, there is a real tra tra trajectory to each of the four pieces here, and sonically, it remains very interesting. Um, you're not always just hearing the instruments, but you're like actually hearing the whole tone shade of the recording switching and changing and moving uh, up and down. Uh, for adventurous listeners, or for or this is for people who maybe don't don't know that they would like something like this try this um i'll leave the link to the public eyesore label as well as the name of this okay so that's my first review of the public eyesore bunch but as i said yesterday i received a package i know i kept i always keep the letters um a fellow named john i have no idea who he is and he said he just wanted to show some appreciation. And he sent me some records. Nothing special. You know, matter of fact, <clears throat> I can see. I say that a lot, don't I? Matter of fact. I just do. So I do. I can see that, that what he did or where the records come from is from the dollar bin at Amoeba. And the dollar bin at Amoeba records out on the West Coast <clears throat> for a person like myself, if I lived there, I would, I could find good music there. He sent me some, 
nothing exceptional, okay, but he sent me some music. It's very nice of him, okay? Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. I'll start... I'll start with this because I already had a copy of this. He sent me the soundtrack by Vladimir Kozma, I believe that's how you say his name, to the movie Diva. Now, I've never gotten all the way through the movie because it doesn't interest me, but I love the soundtrack. There's a lot of uh, tube and throat singing, I believe is what you call it. And um, just, I like soundtracks. This is a good soundtrack. It's a Canadian pressing, so I did notice that. I already have this. Mine's an American, and this is a Canadian pressing. Big deal, but you know, it's as a record collector, those little things I do notice, okay? So he sent me that, and uh, actually played it because I love that soundtrack. This is Beat. It looks like it come, came, came from a library. Temptation, Solid Rock. Um, the thing that I've always admired about Norman Whitfield and the Temptations work was how they made those socially conscious songs and embraced the trends and even though it was pop music there was still a message a, a pertinent message and this one is the same they have the long track stop the war now um, even though the, the track is kind of dated sounding the men the message is still so important we're our um, our power mad um, heartless leaders are just dead set on pumping up the money and the way they do it is to have a war so here it looks like here we go rich man's war though war isn't about any any purpose except money here's one that <clears throat> I would not have had any interest in, but he sent it to me, so I listened to one side of it, and it's early recordings by Al Jarreau from 1965. And I got to see Al Jarreau in concert many years ago, and he was a wonderful singer, and fantastic interpreter of jazz. He could scat about as good as Ella Fitzgerald. So I appreciate that, and I, I played it already, and I, I appreciated it. I'll show the ones that I appreciate the most, the two I like the most last, okay? Then we have Harvey Mason, the drummer who was with Herbie Hancock for a while. And this is Funk in a Mason Jar. So, I made it to side two, because side one is just R&B with vocals and stuff that I don't listen to. I don't listen to this stuff. It's just that regular stuff. That's what it's what I call regular stuff. I don't I don't listen to it but but I get to side two and there's this there is a um, instrumental Fantasia I like it and I like it so well I'm gonna play it on my radio show that's the one thing is I do appreciate what people send to me and I really do listen to the records you know some things it takes me a while to get to but I really do listen okay Borelli the green 15 this was um a man, a, a, a guy who started his career as a musician as a teen. Uh, some would call him prodigy. I get the impression that, according to his um, culture, and I'd have to read to tell you correctly what that is, but there seems to be a flamenco aspect to uh, Legreen's playing, and that seems culturally norm normative. So, no surprising that a young man would be. Not too big of a surprise for that culture that you have young people playing at a great level of um, skill at a young age. His um, claim to fame, or the thing that I noticed about him, and I would have thought would have put him in the major spotlight, is he sounds like Django Reinhardt, the um, legend whose hand was was um, mangled so he could go, basically only had two fingers and played like no one's business you know like you couldn't believe what you're hearing Morelli plays like that and this is this is a live recording really enjoy it this one appear, apparently is a live recording too 
Steep Con Blades. Still has the Amoeba $1 sticker on it. With Anthony Jackson, Steve Jordan, and Manolo Bedrena. This is what I consider kind of like mid-level um, fusion. It's not quite coffee table jazz. These guys can play, but th it, there's no real fire. Not that it has to be fiery, but ensemble playing like this is the most enjoyable when things take off. And this is just nice. The other record that he sent me that I'm going to play something from on my radio show is this. Fire Merchants. I had forgotten about this album because I had never bought it. But it has Chester Thompson on drums, Weather Report, Frank Zappa, Genesis, okay. And then John Goodsoul on guitar from Brand X. And um, it's, it's metal fusion. Um, there's one track on here that I'm going to play. Overall, the album is okay. Once again, it's kind of like... I don't know if it may had more time or if they had one more person's input. This could have been really good. It's just good. But it's the kind of thing that I like to play on my electric jazz show. Fusion. So Hamsterdam is going to get played. John, whatever your name is, last night or whoever you are, thank you for sending me the music. I do appreciate it. I do. I appreciate the gesture. That's amazing that whatever I do here has caused a complete stranger to want to go out, buy records, even if they're just dollar records, and send them to me. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. The last thing I'll say is I still and always will have to deal with the real world, which is all kinds of people and people who are who are less sensitive and empath empathic than others, empathic than others. What I mean by that is when I see comments on my videos that are suspect or they're little um, shots or attempts to sh throw shade, I just delete them because the main thing I understand, and see if you can understand this, all we're doing and all I'm doing is sharing my opinion. Opinions are not facts. So when a person disagrees with me, that's fine. But to do it in a disrespectful or snarky manner, that is uncalled for. And like we used to do when I was a kid, parents would... Um, and adults would address behavior that they thought, well, this is just really unnecessary. I just keep addressing it. It will keep happening, but I'll keep addressing it when I feel the need. Folks, come by and watch my video. You've never met me. We've never spent time together. And yet anonymously, you'll try to say something that's un, un, disrespectful. Put your, if, if you could, for once, try to put yourself in my place and do what you did and receive it and and just realize well that wasn't nice and there was no reason for me to do that and that really says a lot about me the person that did it the person making the video all he's doing is talking he hasn't done anything to to um cause me to be um unkind or or snarky or disrespectful why did i do it this is what I'm throwing out to you folks who have this tendency. A little more self-awareness and maturity could go a long way. I review all my videos and look and listen to what I say because I am concerned about um, being understood and being uh, and people being offended. And I, I, I'm clear that what I'm saying is merely me expressing what's on my mind, sharing it. People. A, t a lot of people tend to obviously like it. Usually within a day or two, there's a thousand views or more of my videos, so someone's enjoying it. So I keep putting this message out because it's an attempt to try to also educate and pass on something useful. We're way past the point where just making jokes about everything is cute and funny. We need more adults to grow up and be responsible and try and pass on something useful. We don't have to be perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm a mess. Look at my teeth. <laughs> it tells you right there, I'm a mess. But it doesn't, that doesn't mean that I can't make sense out of things and share that, okay?
people who really want knowledge realize it's not the message the messenger it's the message okay yeah it's the message not me it's what's being shared <laughs>